Now it was time for Paul to keep an eye on the home of Gordon Tuttle. He was married to a lady named Babette. And had a girlfriend named Gretchen. He had been keeping an eye on the home since the murder and so far. Had seen nothing. As the hours wore by Paul was getting bored when he saw a lady come to the front door of the home. He looked through his binoculars and could not believe it. It was none other than Gretchen Horns. He thought that there was going to be trouble but she was welcomed into the house by Gordon's wife Babette and she stayed there about a half an hour before she left. Paul decided to follow the lady and followed her to her home. There he sat outside her house until midnight with no action. George Streeter was not a man to sit still especially when his whole life was on the line. He had two children and a son who was very sick with cancer and he needed to find out what was going on. He had decided to follow the lead of who had been selling the things to Gordon and Charlie. He knew that some of the items were stolen and some came from estates. Most of the items were hard to trace as they were cheap simple items and there were many of the same thing out there. The auction houses around the area did not help much either as they would list the items simply as a vase or picture. It was going to be hard to prove what was bought legally and what was not. But he was determined to find out who had murdered Gordon Tuttle. He knew that it was not Charlie Bowers. He had only shot and killed the police officer, an offense punishable by death. He was going to have enough trouble of his own when it was proved that he had done the shooting not him, George. He went through every sale that had been made for the last 90 days and came across one problem. There had been a clock that had been sold and the clock had been received broken. The buyer had filed a suit with the site and had won a refund of the entire amount of the clock. This clock had sold for over $850 and the shipping company had been investigating the broken clock themselves. He contacted the insurance company that was handling the case and left a message with one of the investigators a man named Glenn Stevens. He left his name and number and said that he was from the Drake Detective Agency. It was his hopes that he would hear from the man soon. It had been a long day and Perry said goodnight to Della at 11. He felt as though things were going way too slow and he was afraid that George was going to be charged with the murder of Gordon Tuttle also. He was sure that Trag and Berger were hard at work at that aspect of the investigation. They were under a lot of pressure from the police department to get a guilty verdict of that he was sure. Whenever a police officer was killed while on the job the police department would show no mercy to anyone. That night Della went to bed a little more relaxed. She and Perry had decided on the house that they were to purchase and live in once they were married. It was a lovely house with a large yard and garden and lots of room for the children they both wanted to have. She was worried about the murder, but she knew that Perry would get George off on the ridiculous charge of murder of a police officer. But, they needed to find out who had murdered Gordon Tuttle. She knew as well as Perry and Paul knew that the district attorney's office was trying to tie the two murders together. Perry went to his home with happy thoughts about the house that he and Della had decided to buy. It was a big house with plenty of room for his children and a home that he could come to feel at home in. Of that he was sure. He was worried about the murder, but needed some sleep so that he could continue on with the case in the morning. That night all went well, but when they got up in the morning the news was very bad. Someone had murdered. Charlie Bowers the night before. His body had been found floating in the river just outside of his neighborhood. Once again George Streeter had been arrested. He was a suspect in this murder also. Unfortunately for him. He had no alibi for where he was during the time of the murder. Perry went straight to the jail and sat down with George once again. I have no idea what happened Perry. Last. Night I got a call from Charlie telling me that he wanted to speak to me about the murder. I knew that it was 
not a good idea but he told me to meet me at a bar near the pier. He never came and I waited there for over two hours. They say that they found the body not far from the bar, but I never saw him I swear. The police had nothing to hold George Streeter on this time and were forced to let him go home. You stay home. And do not go anywhere unless I tell you that it is all right. Perry warned him. Della had been busy online working on her idea. Someone was after both of the men and she was sure that it had something to do with the online auctions. Every item would need to be checked and every sale would have to be checked also. There had been over 300 sales made on their site in the last 90 days and it was going to take a lot of work. Meanwhile Paul was wondering about what he had seen himself the night before. He had seen Gretchen Horns go into the house of the widow of Gordon Tuttle, Babette. He was wondering about those two and decided to try and work that angle of the mystery. He would see what the two women might have in common and if they were friends or just talking because of the murder. When Gretchen had come to the house she had seemed to have been welcomed by Babette. It was strange but he had seen stranger things in his years as a private eye. Perry Mason was very busy that week. He had called the realtor and had made an offer on the house. He knew that it would take a couple of days for him to hear anything. But the process had now started and with any luck, they would own the house soon. Once the offer was accepted he would have to have a home inspection done and a title search done. It would be a couple of weeks before everything would be ready for the sale or even a little longer possibly. Ah and then the furnishing of the home. He had the lady who had designed his penthouse. He did not know whether or not Della would want to have a designer, but he would approach the subject with her. Of course when he had designed the penthouse he was not that close to Della and he had been a single man. Della might want to design the house the way that she wanted and she was looking forward to shopping with Lori. He would talk to her and see what she said. If Della thought that she had the time to do the design work then it was fine by him she had impeccable taste. Perry had some other things that he was working on and had to put aside the murder investigation for a couple of days. He knew that Paul and Della were hard at work looking into different things and so he let them do their jobs while he worked on some more affidavits. It was a long week and Perry was glad to see Friday roll around. He wanted to go with Della someplace and get away but he knew that was impossible during an important investigation as this one was. They would have to settle for some time together at her house or his. They would be together that was all that mattered. Della had spent the entire week looking into the sales that had been completed on the online auction site between Gordon and Charlie and so far had no luck. Most of the people were happy with their purchases and most of them lived very far away. As a matter of fact some were from foreign countries. She too was glad to have Friday come once again. She would work with Perry from the house and the murder would still be upmost on their mind but the hustle and bustle of the office was not going to be interfering with her concentration. Together Perry and Della left the office once more arm in arm and headed over to Della's house for another night of hard work. They stopped at a local drive through and bought some hamburger and fries to hold them over for the long night.